and we're gonna represent today together mm -hmm. our ancient heritage of Caucasus to American public. Oh. So. Well, this particular region where the uh, Lesgians live, uh, the northeastern Caucasus, almost the central eastern Caucasus, along the western shore of the Caspian Sea, between the Caspian and the uh, main Caucasus range. What's particularly interesting about this area, and uh, crucial to know, is that for millennia, if you wanted to get from, say, Iran or the Arab lands or any place in the south, and you wanted to go to the northern steppes, which are now part of Russia or Ukraine, this was the only route you could take. You couldn't go along the west coast because the mountains go right up to the sea, and so it creates a very small corridor. You couldn't go around the east side of the Caspian Sea because there's the Karakum Desert, which is impassable. And so if you wanted to travel uh, from south to north or north to south, this was the corridor you took. And so as a result, this particular area of the Caucasus is incredibly diverse ethnically, and the people themselves, even though there is a base population that's been there since the Bronze Age, uh, are intermixed with many other peoples from all over the world. Uh, and this migration continued on well into the 1500s. Uh, the uh, Mongol invasion route went right through there as well. And so we have a very uh, rich group of different ethnic groups in this area. They have been subjected to multiple invasions ever since the Bronze Age, but they, we do have a base population that's been there for perhaps 10,000 years, and that's who these Albanians or Lesgians, as we're talking about today, are descended from, is this very, very ancient base population. The interesting factor of the Lesgian, or Al let's say, uh, would be more correct if we say Albanian population, mm -hmm. uh, to describe it, it's kind of a gate, a gateway to the north, and as you mentioned before, a gateway to the east, uh, south. Mm -hmm. So as the Circassians are gateway from west mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. east, these ones are north to the south. Exactly, exactly. The main corridor of the uh, closest corridor, the smallest corridor in that area is the city of Derbent, mm -hmm. which is located ra right now in the Russian Federation, in the mm -hmm. Republic of Dagestan, mm -hmm. where they founded a big, big castle uh, with, uh, to with total walls, wall perimeter about 70 kilometers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. This, uh, according to Persian scientists, it is aged about 5,000 years old mm -hmm. castle. The Derbent castle was a checkpoint, was a mm -hmm. protection point for the regional mm -hmm. invasion, mm -hmm. in invaders, and uh, th it's restored Mm. about four or five times it has been restored. Mm. It has very interesting information hidden in that castle. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit more about Caucasian Albania, which started according to Armenian and Georgian historians mm. from the left bank of the Kura River mm. and going up to the north and northeast. Yeah, it was a relatively advanced uh, kingdom there. And uh, it's interesting that they, there's this a Albania in the Caucasus, but there's an Albania in the Balkans, and they're completely yes. unrelated. It's just one of those coincidental things where the names are similar. Uh, but much like uh, the Georgians, they had a s relatively high level of civilization, of um, political unity, and that was destroyed when the uh, caliphate came in, the Islamic caliphate came in and really destroyed the unity of this, this nation. Uh, and this is, this is where they dispersed into, I think you said 26 different groups, actually, yes. that are all speak very similar languages, but. Um, the real carriers of the language mm -hmm. right now are the Christian Udis, mm -hmm. which are also Udis, related yeah, yeah. to, uh, they're the direct uh, mm -hmm. uh, Albanians, their mm -hmm. language is, more pure than the lesbians because the Arab Arabization and Turkification of the language did uh, in Udi language was mm. the less yeah, among yeah. those all lesbian group languages. Yeah, the actually there was the um, Islamization of uh, 
the, of Albania wasn't very complete for a long time. They still hung on to their uh, pre-Islamic traditions for, uh, like most of the Caucasus peoples, very uh, stubbornly until quite recently, until actually the major war with Russia came down and the, they bound, bound together but with Islam using that as kind of a, a means of uh, unification. But they held very strongly to their uh, pre-Islamic uh, beliefs. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, by the way, they are celebrating up to, the, up to day, mm -hmm. on the 21st of March, mm -hmm. the day of the uh, Sun Stop Day, mm -hmm. 21st of the March as the day of Yaran Suvar or the New Year, Lesbian yeah. New Year. Yeah. The name is Yaran Suvar means the sun, sun's holiday, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the holiday of sun. Mm -hmm. and so there, are different, uh, there are different opinions about where came the word Albanian. Mm -hmm. In Armenian historiography, their name is Ahvang, Ahvang mm -hmm. or Alwang. In the themselves, the lesbians are calling as legs, mm -hmm. which means in lesbian language, an eagle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a culture, by the way, where the eagle has a special meaning for them. Mm -hmm. Even the dance, the Caucasian dance, lesbian. The lesbian, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a copy of eagle fly, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they they're very careful to this heritage. They they try to preserve, and the but before Christianity, they had a god, mm -hmm. which with the name of Alpan. Mm -hmm. The, their main god Alpans, name is Alpan. Alpan yeah. mm -hmm. And the god of the thunder, his name is Taipalan. Yeah. Yeah, well, so these names that were attached to the different groups in the Caucasus are all attached not by outsiders. Of For course. example, the Chechens were what I believe the Ossetians called them. They never called themselves the Chechens. The Circassians called themselves Adiga. Yeah. And that name comes from something else altogether, the way back in the 1300s, that's a Turkic word. Um, the same with Georgian. Georgia is just the name of a region, and uh, that comes from Persian, but it has nothing to do with the ethnic group that cool. lives there. And so we have the same thing with Albania, where we don't know, or, yes. you know, it doesn't reflect the, the exactly what the people themselves viewed themselves as. The lesbians were one of the first Christians in the world, by the mm -hmm. way, the Albanians. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was a battle between Armenia, mm -hmm. uh, joint forces, Armenia, L Albanians, and Georgians mm -hmm. against the Persian, Persian Zoroastrians. Mm -hmm. the Cri it was in 451. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The lesbians also are famous, not only in that battle, but also the Albanian cataphracts participated in the battle with Alexander the Great. Right, right. And that the Alexander the Great ruled the region for a bit of time. Yeah. That was the, actually one of the first things that kind of affected their unity. Was that we were yeah. we were allies of Darius, the, the Persian king Darius, mm -hmm. and the uh, Armenian forces, Georgian forces, mm -hmm. and Albanian forces joined to Persian forces to protect the region. Mm -hmm. And according to Greek historians, Albanian cataphracts attacked attacked. The Alexander's headquarters mm -hmm. and looted some st gold of, from there. Mm -hmm. uh, we, the religion, so they were carrying up to the ninth century the Christian religion. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of temples, churches mm -hmm. all around the area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, by the way, uh, after becoming Muslim, they didn't destroy any of them. No, the, 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 um, the conversion of Islam was not very complete until yeah. they said the 19th century. The interesting moment is also, Professor, that the lesbians or the Albanians do not have a culture of destroying another mm -hmm. church or another religion temple mm -hmm. and not even converting it. Yeah, They build their own mosques near these, those churches. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what? why you can trace what happened to this nation. And that's kind of unusual, too, because usually the... They tear, they either keep the spot holy, but replace the symbol. They tear down a church and put the mosque or whatever the new religion is. Or the, the spot becomes, instead of being holy, it becomes cursed, and then they build someplace else. Exactly. And, they, and so that's kind of unusual that they preserve both. They also preserve the gravestones, the mm -hmm. Christian period gravestones. Mm -hmm. You can find around their bent Christian yeah. gravestones, mm -hmm. which no one of them has been destroyed. Mm -hmm. No one. It's, it's, mm -hmm. 
when we, mm. you know when the religion changed they want to be more fundamentalistic to yeah, yeah. show their loyalty to new religion mm -hmm. but this didn't happen in lesgi case yeah yeah very interesting there are, by the way there are interesting ethnical groups in lesbian mm -hmm. heritage there are lesbians which is the biggest right right biggest talk then they're coming tabasaranians mm -hmm. sahurs rutuls aguls Crees, budus and the smallest group are Udis. Yeah, if you look at a map of that, I have a good map of this region of Dagestan, and it's just multiple colors. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the amount of uh, diversity in this area is just incredible. I don't think you, you could pick any place in the world this small and find that kind of ethnic diversity. Uh, it's very fascinating. After destroying by caliphate of their Catholic crusade, mm -hmm. the lesbian Catholic crusade, mm -hmm. the remaining Christian came to Armenia. Mm -hmm. Th this is how we preserve how we can know mm -hmm. a lot of things about them. Mm -hmm. So the remaining of the lesbians, uh, Al 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 Christian Albanians, came mm -hmm. to Armenia. Mm -hmm. Some of them even died in Karabakh. Yeah. Some of them have been buried even in Karabakh. Mm -hmm. So their center of their religion was the city of Parda, or in Armenia we call it Partav. Mm -hmm. And one of the centers also was the city of Kabala, mm -hmm. which is in Armenian Kapagak, mm -hmm. I, I guess. And so those remainings came to Ar Armenia uh, under the Armenian Christian shield, mm -hmm. and that was it. Yeah. The, so they disappeared. They died. They couldn't. The demography did his job. Yeah, they were assimilated, of course. Yeah, yeah. But and so the lesbians. So they have been pushed by the invaders up to the Dagestan north, 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 mm -hmm. and he, as you see now, even in Dagestan there are. Uh, nation called Kurins, mm. Kurins. Uh, the uh, name na the Tsar uh, the Tsar historians were writing the all lesbians as Kurins. Right. And there was a couple of different names they came they couldn't figure out exactly who these yeah, exactly. people were. So they just put a single name on all of them. So were the Cherkess or Circassians. Exactly. They just they just called everyone a Circassian who happened to live in that area even though there were others. And by the 16th, 17th centuries, the les uh, the remaining of Albanians have been under very high level of pressure uh, by the Persians. No, oh, yeah, the everyone in the region had real trouble with the Persians at that time. They had committed really devastating raids on all the, the peoples there. There were Qajarites, the mm. Qajars, Iranian dynasty, right, Qajars, right. which were just hunting people, mm -hmm. taking to them to Iran. Yeah, yeah, and mixing with their own race. Mm -hmm. the, there are a lot, uh, right now there are existing a lot of even lesbian poems about mm -hmm. the sufferings that these people faced. Oh yeah, yeah. Now that it was very bad. This, the the seventeenth and eighteenth centuries, particularly, that's one of the reasons that the Georgian kingdom started seeking help from Russia. Only they yeah. didn't get so much get help as get taken over, and that was the problem with. In 1722, they rose a big riot, mm -hmm. the lesbians. Yeah. It has been led by Haji Daoud, mm -hmm. their leader, who started this riot against Persian invaders. Mm -hmm. And he did a couple of raids deep inside the Persia, mm -hmm. even. Yeah. He went up to the city of Ardebil, which is mm -hmm. near Caspian Sea, yeah. on the south of the Caspian Sea. He wrote a couple of letters as Georgians to the Russian king, mm -hmm. seeking for help. And, of course, he didn't succeed. Well, the Russians are really good at uh, offering help with a lot of conditions, basically make, making your whatever country you have or your nation subordinate to Russia. But then when the time came to actually give the help, the help never came. Of course. And that was <laughs> always the case with the Russians' uh, way of dealing with the Caucasus. And then the Turkish, while well, the Turkish army came to the region, mm -hmm. same Haji Daoud asked the Turks for help because they were Sunnis. Mm -hmm. And the Turks call, uh, invited him for negotiation, poisoned mm -hmm. him, yeah, and yeah. captured him. Mm -hmm. And nobody now knows even where is the grave of this person. Mm -hmm. The culture of the lesbian people is very similar to, as we know, to regional culture mm -hmm. but they have very interesting specific specifics in their culture they're using the, the you in their music in their poetry you can see a persian 
Oh yeah. A Persian accent. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. Meanwhile, they have very good trades, like one of the best daggers made in Kakustu are mm -hmm. made by lesbians. Mm -hmm. They're really good in rugs, smith. Mm -hmm. They're doing one of the best rugs in the Caucasus. Albanian rugs have been famous by the time by mm -hmm. and Albanian kings were have been invited to Roman Empire to Emperor. Right, right. I was just reading a bit about that this evening. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And plus there was big cooperation between Armenian, Georgians and Albanians. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and, and I've read and not just the battle that you mentioned, but uh, without a doubt, they were uh, they fought together on multiple times in the yes. before one, the year one thousand. They were constantly fighting together, yeah, especially by the Mongol invasion. Well, yeah, that was pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, the Mongols forced us to be more closer, so to cooperate. But uh, as you know, we had we all faced troubles. In the region. No, the Mongols would not give up. That was the problem with them. They actually tunneled through mountains to get into some of the places in uh, what is now Dagestan to get to the um, Lesgian people because there was no way to get to them. So they actually dug tunnels through the mountains to yes. get their armies through. They would just wouldn't give up, and so that that was the biggest biggest uh, challenge they faced in the last thousand years or so. I think. Uh, according to Lesgian historians, by the way, a lot of Lesgians they didn't go to Islam very easily. No, no. It, big massacres have happened mm. by the, done by the Arabian invaders. The huge massacres which are reflected in their poetry, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in their stories, legends. Unfortunately, now lesbians stop using their original alphabet. Right. Which is, uh, uh, according to historians and linguists, it is about six, seven thousand year old alphabet. Yeah. By coming of Christianity, they rejected their own alphabet mm -hmm. and they had desire to use the Greek alphabet because the la yeah, language right. of Bible. Yeah. But after a while, they still continued using the alphabet. And by the way, the teachers who had been re uh, relearned or restudied their old the alphabet that has been thrown away, the alphabet, mm -hmm. have been coming to Mesro of Mashtots and the, the teachers have been trained in uh, Artsakhi or in nagorno karabakh mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And in 451, for up to 455, mm -hmm. Mesro of Mashtots produced about 30 teachers of Albanian language. Mm -hmm. And his, uh, they went from uh, Artsakh to the country of Tavaspar, as mm -hmm. it's mentioned in our historiography. Right. They were the people of Tavaspar. And they went and started again. Uh, they restudied their own alphabet up to the 10th century, 9th, mm -hmm. 10th century, up yes. to Arabian invasion. By the Arab invasion, they started using Arabian letters. The, the Arabic the alphabet, which doesn't work for any language <laughs> except Arabic, unfortunately. <laughs> it, it just it, doesn't. It is not even working for Persians. No, it ha I have a friend who's... Uh, from Iran, and he said when he sees a new word, he can't pronounce it because that there's not enough, there's no vowels. And yeah. in Arabic, the vowel pattern is fixed. So you know, this is a verb, the vowels go this way. But in Persian, I can't I have to look the word up and see how it's pronounced because exactly. it's, it's an inferior <laughs> alphabet for Persian. It's even worse for Turkish because Turkish has a huge number of vowels. Yeah. And uh, so when you, I try to read an Ottoman text in the, in the Arabic script, it's almost impossible. Yes. So I can only imagine what it would be like you know, with a Caucasus language. And uh, by, but the Persians did some improvement and did another alphabet. The name is Ajam. Mm -hmm. They like modified it for the prona Caucasian pronunciation. Yeah, there's a few modifications of the Arabic for Persian too, because you have the ge sound and so on. But yeah, it's still. It's yeah, but again, it didn't work. And in 1920s, mm -hmm. by the communist ruling, mm -hmm. They start using Cyrillic, which is used up to date. Yeah. There are a few, a few scientists, lesbians, historians, that are started using their own native alphabet. Yeah. Uh, they even uh, they did several attempts to write down the computer program to type mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. Albanian alphabet, and I think one day they're gonna succeed. Yeah, yeah. Well, it'd be interesting uh, we'll to see, and just wonder what your opinion is about that because. 
if they do switch back to their native alphabet, it's going to make it more difficult for, say, anyone who wants to learn their language to access it. So because, for example, right now if I wanted to learn um, lesbian, the lesbian language, I can read the Cyrillic alphabet. Uh, yeah, but if they I switch agree. to a different alphabet, then I have to start over from scratch uh, and learn an entire new uh, alphabet. You're right. For you, it's going to be m much yeah. easier to learn them. But on the other hand, if you want to learn their cross tones, mm -hmm. their churches, yeah, yeah. you cannot understand. Right, right. For example, I did a test in Armenia. I, you, you know, this is about over a thousand years, the lesbians and Udis are living separate, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in separate atmosphere they are Sunni these are Christians mm -hmm. and I left them alone in a room mm -hmm. but 30 minutes they were talking mm -hmm. they were not understanding each other yeah but after a while like about two three hours later mm -hmm. they were starting to communicate mm -hmm. so something happened yeah I mean this language that they are using as a the, the letters they are using in Cyrillic mm -hmm. is good but for the half of them, because half of them are living in Russian Federation, mm -hmm. and half of them are living in Azerbaijan Republic. That's the the big thing about these people. It's the same the problem that the Ossetians have, uh, and that is that they're split. They have. A, can you imagine having your nation where you are used to going, you know, hundred yards to visit the neighboring village for centuries? And then suddenly there's an international border and you're, you're separated into two separate nations. Exactly. And that is the big, you know, peop, everyone I think is who pays any kind of attention to the Caucasus knows the problem the Ossetians have, that they're split now. Well, right now they're not because Russia kind yeah. of took the land. But technically they're separated into two countries. But no one really knows the Lesgians have the same um, dilemma of being literally split between Russia and Azerbaijan. And... The two halves of the nations each face their own problems because they're, um, they're well, particularly in Azerbaijan, they're a distinct minority to the Azeri yeah. majority. And so this is one of the things about this people, I think, that um, no one really un knows and that it's something that's, uh, should be, that should be considered when you're looking at the Caucasus in general, that we have these nations that are literally cut in half because of these arbitrary borders that were created a long time ago. Yes, uh, by the way, one of the reasons that uh, most of the ca tensions in Caucasus appear are the speculations on that. Mm -hmm. Mo because the nations that are split by the borders do not have pro proper auto cultural autonomy. No. Oh. I mean, the language, the music, mm -hmm. like this own media sources, own newspapers. Like mm -hmm. uh, when you want to share something with your neighbor that is up to, to the north, like about 15 miles, mm -hmm. you cannot. You have to pass through, ca through through the corridors of the bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. You have to do this. You have to do that. Yeah, which is utterly ridiculous. You know, it, it's ridiculous. The the problem with the, these nations, Ossetia and with uh, Lesgistan, being cut in half like that, no one pays any attention to them in international circles. No one really is thinking about how to solve these problems. And so these people, very small groups of people, are literally without a, out of luck because no yes. one was willing to, to uh, stand up for them, to uh, advocate for them the, the, the unity that they deserve and need to continue yeah. to survive. Yeah unique moment of the lesbians is that they are preserving a lot of interesting information for the future generations mm -hmm. like uh, even in, in Armenia we knew that there was a country Al Albania mm -hmm. and that's it but we don't know what type of missionaries were coming going back and forth but we're opening the books from Armenia in Yerevan, the Martin Adaran books, and we see that mm -hmm. we had queens, mm -hmm. Armenian yeah. queens in Albania, mm -hmm. and we had even assigned a king in Albania, mm -hmm. and they, uh, we also sent army to fight the Mongolians mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to Albania. So there was, there was trade, there was economical cooperation, cultural cooperation, mm -hmm. and we see that we went to fight somewhere on Al Alans, uh, Al Alania lands. Alania, yeah, yeah. yeah so we went there to stop who, 
Punic invasions mm -hmm. to help the Persians. Mm -hmm. And by the Tukman Chai Agreement in 1813, yes, the mess started. That Let's is really, that, that treaty was really the two empires who gave absolutely no consideration to its effects on the people that were there. Uh, that's probably a, one of those very stereotypical imperial actions because the the people who live doing something arbitrarily with no today the interesting is that that will leave these nations untouchable mm -hmm. give them autonomy give them uh, self-governing mm -hmm. institutions let them to live the way they were living mm -hmm. but they didn't because they sent the russian orthodox church in and the the, the of the Georgians and so on. That wasn't the right Christianity, and so they of tried, course they they, they start enforcing the um, the Buddhists were apostolic church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they enforced yeah. the Orthodox Church. Yeah, and they try to destroy their languages too. Of course, of course them all make them all speak Russian, which was one of the, one of the worst things that they could that, do. That was the reason when the Sufi movement started, and mm -hmm. then it became into it grew up into the Gazavat. Yeah, yeah. By the way, the teacher, religious teacher of Imam Shamil was Lesge Muhammad Yarahi. Yeah, we mentioned, you mentioned that before, yeah. yeah. Very interesting, and he was really, he was going from village to village with a wooden sword. Mm -hmm. The lesbian stories mm -hmm. that I heard that he was going with a wooden sword, the people were making fun from him. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, stand up and fight for your lands. Stand up and fight for your kids. Stand up and fight for your heritage. Mm -hmm. So, you see what happened. Well, yeah, I went and um, it really started uh, right around 1800 when the, for a long time in the institute of, it was called tribute. They needed to get to, they needed this corridor to get through and to get through it safely, they would essentially give money or goods to whoever the uh, various khans who were running the little khanates there. And shortly after 1800, a new Commander-in-Chief Tsitsianov came in, yeah. and he wanted to, do, you've read some of the things Tsitsianov said, he would send these um, mem uh, manifestos to these Khans saying, I'm going to you be waiting in your blood, you all need to submit to the Russian Empire, and he was completely uh, barbaric about the way he decided yeah. he was going to destroy every one of these Khanates. He ended up being um, assassinated by, uh, in a negotiation because the people there were just so sick of him. And so that was really the change. And by the time of Shamil, the people that that was, of course, after Yermolov, who was yeah. much worse than Tsitsianov. Then we uh, have it was just this continual pressure on these people, and they really had no no alternative but to fight back the way they did. The bad thing on that is also that the, most of the top uh, fight or Turkey of Azerbaijan, the city, uh, the city of Tsar. Mm -hmm. which is in lesbian Qatar, mm -hmm. now it's Qusar. The city yeah. of Kuba is a Guba. Yeah, yeah. And the Vartashe now is Ogus. Oh, yeah. And yeah. They're, they're wiping out. It's, it's a culture, kind of culture erase, erasement or erasing procedure. And meanwhile, in Dagestan Republic, they're Turkifying also the names, mm -hmm. the settlements. Mm -hmm. Like instead of in lesbian language, the village means Hur mm -hmm. in Turkish is Kent. Yeah. A lesbian village with Turkish name. Mm -hmm. Like 100 years ago, it was in lesbian language. Yeah, and there's a lot of names that are in honor of Russian generals and uh, yeah, generals oh yeah, yeah. who actually s wiped these people out. So, and then there's, so the culture of genocide continues. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's one of the, in my second book, that's what I talk about in the West Caucasus, is that this cultural genocide continues right up to this very day. And the Derbent Castle is about 5,000 years ago. That's mm -hmm. according to like, all Western knowledge historians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, that, uh, that particular corridor all the way back into the uh, Bronze Age was, was a major corridor for civilizations year, <laughs> constantly. Very interesting, Professor. This year they were celebrating, the mm -hmm. Russian governing administration in Dagestan were celebrating Derbent 2,000 year. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, what is the reason? What do you think, what can be the reason of that? Well, the Russians have tried to rewrite the history of these areas entirely. So when that, for example, not too long ago, they had a um, celebration in Kabardia over further in the West 
of, uh, <clears throat> I must have been, what, 500 years of Kabardian Russian uh, alliance, or Kabardia's accession into the Russian Empire. Not at all. There was a treaty. The Kabardians signed a mutual defense treaty with the Russians. They maintained independence. But it was to, the, by saying that Kabardia was part of Russia all the way back in the 1500s, then that negates the justification for the Circassian War against the Russians because, it, well, they weren't independent. They were already part of, yeah. of Russia. So the, I haven't studied this, but it's got to be something along the same lines of trying to rewrite the history to make it look as though the real history there, the, the length of the time these people were there was not le is legitimate, and so the Russians can take claim uh, to the area. I mean, the B Azerbaijan Republic and the Moscow governing administration, mm. they, they actually on the lesbian questions, they're always agreeing together. Mm -hmm. In this case, they had absolute ag agreement. The Baku governing mm -hmm. gov <laughs> government and the Moscow yeah. government were okay with 2000, so they made the city younger. Yeah, yeah. I think the reason of making the city younger is to show to the world that they are almost same age guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, yeah, there's there's always a political agenda to this. Uh, the, anything coming out of Russia these days is going to have a very strong political agenda. And dealing with the Caucasus, Russia's entire uh, uh, agenda is to delegitimize anything in the Caucasus that makes it look as though they're, they've been independent or heaven forbid, older than Russia, which, of course, yeah. they are. And so that's, that's what's going to be, I you're going to be seeing this, a lot of that. I think this is the under, undermining of this yeah. celebration 2,000-year-old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And by yeah. the way, a lot of Persian historians cannot have access to that castle yeah. now. They yeah. have to pass through different corridors of the bureaucracy again to get a permit to start any studies in that Awesome. Well, it's impossible uh, to get into a lot of the, the material. The material that I got for my second book, I got it from the Tbilisi State Archives, which were copies of the ones that are in Moscow. But in Moscow, they won't let foreigners look at the documents at all. So in Tbilisi, uh, well, this was in 2008, 2009, they were letting anybody come in there. And so we, so actually, a friend of mine copied thousands of pages from the Tbilisi archives, but the Russians don't want anybody accessing this stuff. And now with, I have a, I have heard the Georgian archives, which would probably have a lot of material about the Lesgans, uh, it's getting harder and harder to get into. Uh, by the way, actually in Yerevan, in Matena Daran, mm -hmm. in, the, um, in the storage of ancient books, we ca you can find any time a lot of materials about Albania, Mm -hmm. And we, you can find even some books in Albanian, mm -hmm. in Albanian language, and the lesbians can translate and read them now. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there is no Albanistic studies in Armenia University, mm -hmm. in Dagestan University, mm -hmm. and nowhere in the world, actually, right, yeah. except in Azerbaijan Republic, which is very politicized, mm -hmm. and actually the modern day. Azerbaijan Republic policy towards Albanians are the Albanians were the ancestors of the Turks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's written in the books. And yeah, there's there a were 26 tribes. One of them was the Turkic, so they dominated, and etc. Et there are some pretty fanciful theories about the origins of some of the different Caucasus <laughs> peoples I have read. And, um, yeah, that's, it's, um, it's unfortunate. But um, in the 11th century, there was a mask in Baku. Mm -hmm. The name was Lesgi Mask. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The name was Lesgi Mask. Four years ago, they renamed it. Of course. Ashul Bailey Mosque. Mm -hmm. There were some protests, there were some letters to the president. No, but the the do not rena rename it. Yeah, but the Lesgans are such a small minority, they don't have any voice. No one knows who they are either, so they don't have any international voice. And to so be honest, uh, Lesgans are about 900,000 mm -hmm. in Azerbaijan Republic and about 800,000, eight to 700,000 in Dagestan. Yeah, it makes them a quite a large nation as Caucasus nations go. But being split in half like that doesn't do them and any good. Besides, they have been split by Rutus, are written now in different ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. Argus are written 
Like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. They reclassified. Los Angeles them. nation. Yeah. San Francisco nation. So San Diego nation. Well, that's what the Russians did with the Tatars to make the Tatar population of Russia look smaller. They broke them up into four different groups. Exactly. And, uh, and so that's a real tricky thing. They love to do and that. Same, same happened to them. Now, the mm -hmm. Tatars are not acknowledged as lesbians. Yeah, yeah. But the, the difference is like Los Angeles accent and Louisiana accent, mm -hmm. but the same language. Right, right. But they are different ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we actual number of lesbians, uh, according to Tsar um, counting, the Tsar, mm -hmm. uh, the Tsar's census, 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 right? It's in English. Mm, yeah, yeah. S census. Mm -hmm. uh, about they were on the fourth place in Caucasus. Mm -hmm. The quantity of lesbians were the on the fourth place in Caucasus. Yeah. They were the. The second were Circassians. Right. The fourth were lesbians. Interesting. Yeah, it's this divide and conquer strategy yeah. that's been going on. The, the Circassians were busted up into different republics. Karachai Balkars have been split into two yes. republics. You know, it, it just continues on. And then uh, the lesbians and the other peoples who are classified as non lesbians now. It's, <laughs> a, it's a very, you know, it's a very tricky strategy. And when you make smaller and smaller groups of people, it's easier to assimilate them. And so that's control exactly them, yeah. And that's what's going on, yeah. Unfortunately, the absence of statehood and absence of the national institutions as schools, mm -hmm. um, study centers, uh, or institutes or universities mm -hmm. is killing this nation. Yeah, it's just doing it to all of the smaller Caucasus nations, absolutely. And I think by disappearing this nation, Nobody will win. I mean, the humanity. No, of course not. This is one of the things that drew me into the Caucasus is there are all these small ethnic groups that are treated quite literally as pawns. And these are real people who yeah. are just trying to live their lives. And because of power struggles uh, by large nations, there they have no rights. And even when Western countries, the United States, England gets involved, it's never concerns what's best for those people. It's all about geopolitical maneuverings. They really don't care about the actual people on the ground who are just trying to live their lives. By the way, when I asked the here American politicians what we are going to do about these small nations, they say uh, our concern is human right. Okay, if the human right, what about these groups? Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, you have to exist as a nation to have human rights. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah. And. E the humanity is winning when all nations are living together, mm. when everybody is progressing and uh, mm. somebody is inventing something, somebody is playing something, somebody mm. is writing something. Yeah. And all this mosaic, if disappear and... It would be such a tragedy with a nation like uh, Lezgistan, these people who, who have been there for as long as the other great nations of the South Caucasus, of Georgia and Armenia, but they, because of they happen to be in just the wrong place, they get split in half, and they don't have any kind of cultural autonomy, and so they're losing their, their language, their culture, their heritage, just because of you know arbitrary borders, and it's, it would be a tremendous tragedy for this nation in particular to, to disappear. I think anybody who can help these people, uh, or any country who gonna look on these people, th Look on these people as an autonomous group and help them, uh, or help them to do something to stay what they are. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be welcomed by the local nations, mm -hmm. and otherwise they they gonna disappear. Right. They gonna disappear, and nobody will win, and nobody gonna be happy of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, that's why this show is very good. Yeah. I'm glad you're raising an awareness of people who have not heard of these smaller nations. Everyone has heard of Armenia, of Georgia, but these smaller groups of people that uh, are suffering and really need the help of the international community. Yes. And I'd say the lesbians are way up there on the list, a very ancient nation that is really facing hard times right now. For example, if you see the Adiga people have kind of, let's call it fake autonomies, fake mm, yeah. statehood, but they, at least they have something, at least something have Armenians, Mm -hmm. So they have the Chechens, the Vainachs, mm -hmm. these people have nothing. Exactly, exactly. They are, they're in a very, very bad position right now. By the way, the 
great Azerbaijani comp- composer, the Uzir Hajibeko, was lesbian. Yeah, yeah. But you cannot find anywhere that he's lesbian. He's Azerbaijani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for why not? For why? Like, we have a Udi general in Armenian army who was very famous, mm-hmm. Thomas Nazarbekov, and we never hide that he, that he's yeah, yeah. Udi. Well, he didn't feel threatened by the Azerbaijanis uh, there. I'd say it's the same thing that the Russians are doing. They want these people to gradually be assimilated and to disappear. And Russian, so, yeah. Russianin, as they say. The Russianin, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Russianin. Uh, over there, they're Russianin. Over here, they're Azerbaijanis. Yeah, and yeah. that's it. It's done. Yeah, yeah. That's Russianin, uh, Azerbaijanin. That's it. Mm-hmm. We, uh, <laughs> I think we're going to help these people to to be heard. Yes. To be heard and hopefully next time we can uh, speak more about different nations. We will. Yeah. About Talishis, the Av- Avars, about Yezidis. By the way, Yezidis also yeah, are existing yeah. in Caucasus. In I cannot say in their p- small 